What's up, it's the Coaster Craze, and as one of my first videos of the new year, 2023, I think it's about time I do something I haven't done in like a really long time on this channel, and that's ranking my top coasters. And in the past, it's always been top 10 and whatnot, but 2022 was kind of an insane year for coasters for me. I know you haven't seen a lot of it yet because I'm just putting up the first of the European coaster vlogs and park experiences on the channel. There's a lot more to come, but wow, I got 83 new credits. It went from 182 as my coaster count to 265 by the end of the year. I went to like 13 new parks or something, you know, across America and Europe. So it was a huge year and it's completely reshaped my top coasters. So I'm expanding it to a top 25, which is super exciting. And if you see uh, this paper at all in the video, I've actually been handwriting, ranking my coasters I've been on, every single one of them, since, look at this, August 2nd, 2013, when I had only written 22 coasters. It was like the second year, or like the first year that I was a coaster enthusiast. So let's get into this list. And number 25, we got Goliath at Walibi Holland. Now, this is a coaster that, you know, as a budding young enthusiast, I remember seeing it and I was like, ah, this is one of the best coasters in Europe, you know, because this is one of the early 2000s intimates that was getting rave reviews, and that kind of carried over into like the early 2010s, but as the years gone by, we've seen Intamin just in coaster manufacturers in general really have stepped up their game. And yeah, while Goliath is very fun, especially those airtime pills at the end, really have some great ejector. The Stengel dive is great. The drop is pretty solid. It's developed a rattle. Some of the helixes definitely lose their bite. It was a huge thing in the early 2000s, but now the coaster game has eclipsed it. Number 24 is a pretty controversial coaster. This is my least favorite RMC, so you know, it's only up from here. Jersey Devil Coaster at Six Flags Great Adventure. I just want to say, I consider all these 25 coasters to be elite. I'm actually a big fan of Jersey Devil. It was uh, actually the most recent coaster I've ridden as of this video. I got a few night rides on it at Six Flags Great Adventure's Holiday in the Park uh, last year. Fantastic at night. It really is. It's sped up a lot. The restraints really destroy the ride for me because it's a big thigh crush and really inhibits airtime. But that drop is insane. The layout is still pretty whippy. The inversions are great. It has a little bit of a rattle, more than you think for like an RMC, but those single rails getting a little bit rough. But it's still a very fun ride, even if at the end it's kind of lose loss of its steam. At number 23, we're already going back to Walibi Holland. Yeah, that park is great. And this is a coaster that shocked me how much I liked it. It was semi on my radar before Europe. But yeah, this was one of the big great surprises of that whole semester abroad. This is Lost Gravity, the original mock Big Dipper. And... What a weird coaster. When I first walked up to it, besides the theming being bizarre and awesome in the best way, with the weird queue line, topple buses, whatnot, every element just looks so wrong and odd. Just the profiling of the airtime hills, the inversions, the transitions. That made it all the more exciting when you wrote it, because it's a pretty smooth ride. It's a lap bar. One of the most insane drops I've ever been on a coaster. You really... Flip over yourself there, which is wild. The couple inversions are great. There's some really cool theming elements, like they shoot up fire during the ride. The airtime is surprisingly potent, especially when it warms up later during the day. This thing is just wonky in the best way possible. Now at number 22, I got Candymonium at Hershey Park, which I think it's a really creative hypercoaster layout in some parts. You know, the ending, especially you see B&M expanding their uh, elements a bit. But I think it's a bit short of a ride for what it is out of like a couple more elements. Maybe it loses its steam a little bit in those last couple when it's doing that kind of roundabout around the fountain, which is pretty. But again, it's just not like the full powerhouse that I would want from this type of coaster. And that drop is fantastic. There's some really great airtime. The setting is great. All around, this is one of the most enjoyable coasters out there. But it definitely loses a bit for intensity. Now at number 21, we have easily, probably the most controversial. This is a coaster that is hated, like hated. But for some reason, by one ride, maybe it was perfect circumstances. I don't know. I absolutely adored this thing. This is, I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation, Loop Guru or Werewolf 
at Walibi, Belgium. So this is Halloween, right? And me and my friend are there. It was a great, great day, but it was packed. So we didn't get on this coaster because this gets the longest line in the park for some reason, which now I understand because I love the ride. But we finally get on it and it's a night ride, right? It, there's all the Halloween like lights going on, the fog and whatnot. And there's our last ride of the day. We get like second to last row. And holy crap, this felt like a slightly shorter version of Ghost Rider. Yeah, that high praise. This thing, yeah, sure, it's rough, and I would love a GCI retracking of this similar to Ghost Rider, but those Millennium Flyer trains really help, and honestly, the roughness didn't bother me. This felt like an out-of-control night ride that was just berserk. I mean, we didn't know where the coaster was dropping, when it was going to happen. Every time we were sent out of our seats, the laterals are crazy. Let me know if there's any other uh, Loop Guru fans out there. Speaking of Knott's Berry Farm, at number 20, we got Accelerator, which is a coaster that's definitely short but sweet. It's always down, but I got to ride it, luckily, a few times, like about a year ago. And boy, oh my god, the launch is so, so powerful. That top hat is great. You always grab the bottom. Those overbank turns are really powerful and fun. It is a short ride and it doesn't do a ton, so it can't get any higher. But for what it is, in terms of the quality it packs in in such a short ride, I think it's like 22 seconds launch to break. Yeah, there's very few coasters that beat it. At number 19, I have another B&M Hyper. This is Mako at SeaWorld Orlando, which is one that gets a ton of praise. And I loved it. I thought it was just butter smooth, great layout, tons of floater airtime. But I think there are some better Hypers out there. I think that one hill that's kind of trimmed to death messes it up a little bit. And I think some of the other hills don't deliver as much airtime as it could be. I think the setting is great. The engine, even though it's so beautiful over the water, isn't the most intense or powerful. But I understand the hype for this one. That drop is just ridiculous. And it is one of the best night rides you can get. But now we got Wonder Woman Flight of Courage at Six Flags Magic Mountain, which is placing a fair amount higher than Jersey Devil and... Like everyone's saying, this thing runs a whole lot faster. Maybe it was just because I rode it during opening day in the front row where it felt super fast and oh my god, opening day was like 104 degrees. So you bet this thing was speeding as fast as it could and the pacing was just lightning fast, absolutely intense. I think I grayed out maybe once or twice and the ending with those extra couple elements, especially the overbank, really complete the ride. Yeah, this thing is just fantastic. Again, if it didn't have those crappy restraints, this would be a lot higher on my list. Now, we're going to number 17, and we got another B&M Hyper. This is Nitro at Six Flags Great Adventure, which, oh my gosh. This is such a ride that I feel like it really varies in terms of the experience. It's one of my most ridden coasters. It's been one of my favorites for like seven years now. And while it definitely has developed more of a rattle, and maybe the airtime isn't always as strong as it used to be, usually has to be in a very hot day or where it's running for a while to really feel that speed and airtime, I mean, that upward helix halfway through the ride, that can send you easily into a gray out, especially when you're in the back row. The drop is solid, even if it's not so steep, but also the thing is massive. It goes 80 miles per hour, and boy, does it deliver one of the best night rides ever. I mean, my last ride on this for that Holly in the Park visit, holy crap. It was 80 miles per hour, front row, 30 degree weather at night. One of the most insane, if not the most insane experiences I've ever had at Coaster. So for that alone, Nitro is amazing. Now at 16, we're going back to the same park. This is King Dakka at Six Flies Great Adventure. Now, I talked about Accelerator and how it packs in a lot of bang for your buck. Well, this packs even more bang in for less buck. This coaster is so, so short. It's literally just a launch, top hat, and one sort of airtime hill that barely gives any airtime. But that launch, especially if you're in the front row, is just obscenely intense and so fun. You feel your cheeks going back like this and going up to the top hat and just feeling that moment of floater air and then spiraling back down and feeling all the speed that you garnered with that launch. Picking up as you twist like 270 degrees towards the ground. I feel like I'm in like an ad campaign for King of the Car right now. I swear. This is not sponsored. But holy crap. Talk about ultimate adrenaline rush in one ride. This is it. Now we got at number 15. This is Superman Ride of Steel at Six Flags America. So this has been my home park. Now it's not, I guess, because I go to college in LA. But it was my home park for pretty much my entire time as an enthusiast. 
one of my most ridden coasters I've ever been on. So I've seen it during its weekdays and some of its best days, like, you know, night rides front row in the cold or in the hot summer nights where it's just absolutely insane how it's running. But overall, this coaster is just amazing. It's 100% a front row ride where you can get a really smooth attraction. And oh my god, the airtime in the first half of the ride, you got these massive floater hills. And in the second half, it pulls some of the most insane ejector you're going to find. Some insane in the back row too, but in the front, really is wild. The first helix, I almost always gray out on. The second one, it does have a dead spot pretty much halfway through. This coaster just doesn't get the praise it deserves, in my opinion. Now we got at 14 of truly berserk coaster. This is X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain, which, yeah, I don't need to say what's already been said about this ride. It is demonic. I don't know how it exists. This was one of the first rides in years that actually scared me the first time I rode it. That drop in the back row where you're flipping under yourself is insane. When the audio is on and the fire effects are on is even more crazy. I just wish that last Raven turn didn't make me want to die because, oh my god, one of the most painful experiences on a coaster every time it gets that last element. If it didn't have that or if it was a smoother ride experience, this would definitely be top 10. Now at 13, I have my favorite B&M Hyper, which is a shocking one. It's the original, Apollo's Chariot at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. This was one of the first coasters I ever rode. It scared my pants off, but I finally went back a couple years ago. And holy crap, this blew me away. Maybe I rode it on the perfect day. It was a hot day in the summer. I got a lot of rides, including some night rides. One of the best night rides out there. The scenery is just immaculate. The airtime, the floater is amazing. It was butter smooth the day I rode it. I really love some of those like twists in the turnaround section at the far end of the ride. It's got some of that OG B&M charm. Now at 12, I have a coaster I talked about before. This is the American Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider at Knott's Berry Farm. This is like Loop Guru if it was much longer, good amount taller, good amount faster, and smooth as could be thanks to that GCI retrack. This thing, I don't need to sing the praise again. It is amazing. Oh my gosh, the night rides are insane. The day rides are great too, but crap, this thing really just speeds up, especially towards the end. Those laterals are just unheard of, and it keeps on going and wrapping under itself within the structure. Now at number 11, we are returning to Europe at last, and this is to Germany with my favorite ride at Fantasialand, Tarrant, just missing the top 10. This coaster actually exceeded my expectations. I mean, it's not the most intense out there, mind you, but those launches are fantastic and really powerful. You get some great lateral airtime, which is, I think, the strongest suit of this ride because the restraints are so freeing as you go back and forth through the rock work, which is, again, another strong suit. Probably the best theme coaster on this list by a long shot. Just insane. Yes, it has a couple dead spots at the end of the first launch section, at the end of the second launch section, which, you know, I wish I had some more speed and some better pacing, but overall, this is a wild experience that's so well themed, you really feel immersed in the environment. And that brings us to our top 10 with Sky Rush at Hershey Park. This is, again, a kind of a thigh crush coaster if there ever has been one. I mean, it has that nickname for a reason, but it never bothered me much. I always found it pretty smooth. And it's been some years since I wrote it, but one of the most insane first drops out there. I grew out every time at the bottom on that turn. The setting over the water is great. The airtime is so, so powerful. The wing seats really make you feel just out of control. And the, the fast paced turns back and forth are just what Intamin does best. If this had better restraints, oh my gosh. Could be the most intense coaster in the world so deserves a spot in my top 10. Now at number nine, we got another Pennsylvania hyper coaster, Phantom's Revenge. Oh gosh, if there's a coaster that feels like unreal, especially towards the end with those rapid fire air time hills when you're in the back row where it does not feel like the train should be going over this small hills at this speed. Yeah, it's this one. It's just insane with that finale. But even before that, I mean, you got the second drop that's bigger than the first and it goes under Thunderbolt, the old wind coaster. Best night ride out there, quite possibly, as you're just dropping into literal darkness. You feel that speed. It's wicked fast, like 85 miles per hour. Not the longest ride, but oh my gosh, it is just such a rush the entire time. Now at number eight, we have quite a problematic coaster. It is my favorite wooden coaster, El Toro, Six Five's Great Adventure. While this coaster has gone through some rough and smooth patches, literally and figuratively, 
overall, it is another one of those rides that does not feel like it should exist. Especially that crazy air type hill over the old Rolling Thunder track. Just sends you out of your seat. It was like low to the ground, like back to back turns. Oh my gosh, it's insane. And my favorite first drop on a coaster ever, especially in the back row. It feels like you're falling forever. And when you go under the structure, it's just insane. Hopefully it comes back smoother and faster than ever because yeah, it's a truly a one of a kind special attraction. Now at number seven, we have uh, actually my favorite hyper coaster, Superman the Ride at Six Flags New England. And this is a ride that obviously everyone knows has one of the best layouts out there, especially for a coaster that's 20 years old, it's still running so well, so smooth. The drop is amazing, the airtime during the first half, and then the crazy twister section in the second half. But of course, those U brick restraints really hurt. If there's one thigh crush coaster out there that hurts the most, I think it's this one. But the pacing is so good. I don't know how they designed this 20 years ago. People in like the turn of the millennium must have been like, what is this? How could this even be existing? But still, it's blowing my mind in the 2020s. Now, at number six, got another European coaster, and this was neck and neck with number five for my favorite coaster in Europe, but I ended up going with my number five pick. So, number six, we have Untamed at Willibe Holland. Going back to that park, which, yeah, great top three. This coaster is a very unique RMC hybrid layout. It's very sprawling. It's got five inversions, which is a lot, and it packs in some very interesting ones, too, like that Barrel roll at the end where you're really hanging there. I did not see that coming. That return trip is absolutely insane. You got like a double up into a double down early on in the ride. You got the crazy step up under flip. The drop is great. Overall, this attraction just blows my mind completely. The only reason it's not as high as some of the other RMCs on this list is because I don't think it nearly has the crazy intensity and power of some of the more compact RMCs. So that means number five, my favorite coaster in all of Europe is Conda at Willibe, Belgium. When I talked about Goliath being what Intamin used to do great and how modern Intamin has kind of showed it up, I'm talking about Conda. Oh my gosh, Intamin took a little bit of lessons from RMC and they put in their own sauce and they made something ridiculous. It's got those last airtime hills that remind me of Phantom's Revenge with a back-to-back -back rapid fire. It's got some really wonky elements in the first half, like a big outer banked airtime hill that not inverting cobra roll it's got some great load of the ground elements that are super intense that first drop towards the back where you twist sideways and then go down whoa it's crazy such a cool coaster how you're running through the fields too it really feels like you're immersed in the environment when it came out i was like this could be one of the best in the world and it sure lived up to those expectations number four what do we got Wicked Cyclone, back to Six Flags New England. And this is a very compact RMC, one of the smallest coasters on this list, but what a powerhouse. Even in that third trip where it loses a little bit of steam, it still packs in some crazy rapid fire elements. All three inversions are very snappy, although the last one gives you some great hang time. The drop is wild. This coaster, especially at full heat when it's running on a hot summer day, it's just insane how much they packed into such a small ride. I don't get it, but yeah. Great attraction. And that leads number three, Twisted Classes at Six Flags Magic Mountain, which is kind of my new home park, and I ride this coaster a ton. Even without the duel, every single element on this attraction completely pops off. There's no dead spots whatsoever besides, obviously, the two left hills, but it's such a long ride. It feels like legitimately two complete rides put back to back together, and they both deliver very different experiences. Yeah, this coaster is just insane. So many iconic moments like the Blue Hill, Camelback, the Top Gun stall, the high five moment. Oh my gosh, I could just imagine this ride's layout in my head and fall asleep with great thoughts. Number two, Intimidator 305. So this was my number one for the longest time. Last time at this video was my number one. Finally got back to Kings Dominion in 2021, and it was even better than I remembered. Oh my gosh, this thing, one of the most intense coasters out there, if not the most intense, you're going to grab out the bottom in the back row. That drop is crazy. Even if it's a bit trimmed during the second half and you lose some of that airtime, it's still a great ride. And of course, the most best thing about this ride are those rapid fire switcheroo elements, the intimate twisties as we like to call them, so low to the ground, 90 miles per hour, it feels like it's going to snap your neck, but it's still butter smooth and very comfortable. But, but, even if this coaster still exceeded my expectations, another ride, a much smaller one at the same park, blew me away. And that of course is my number one, Twisted Timbers. Now this is just everything RMC does 
but to the highest point. The amount of airtime they pack into this, don't forget, of course, the triple camelbacks that are insane, but those little hops that come out of nowhere that shouldn't even be there are just mind-blowing. The Barrel Roll Down Drop, one of the best inversions out there. The other couple inversions are fantastic. And one of the best moments is when it's going through the structure and it randomly goes into this miniature outer banked airtime hill that comes out of absolutely nowhere, sends you flying. That's my favorite moment of the whole attraction. It's never talked about. And then you're back going sideways again. And it just does not stop. It's relentless. It's such a small, short ride. But the map then got out of Hurler, which is a wind coaster I rode back in the day. I thought it was, you know, pretty mediocre. RPC took this and turned it into a true masterpiece. So yeah, that's the top 25. Sorry this video got long, but I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know your favorite coasters in the comment section down below. Stay tuned for a lot of those awesome Europe vlogs coming soon. I'll see you guys later. Bye.